So lately I found out there is a cooking pot to prepare your meal with some smart features like Wi-Fi. And this is really just a cooking pot. It's not like with four work where you have like chopping or slicing or something included. It's really just a pot inside that heats up and can build up pressure from this heating. Nothing else really. And it's from the company called Krups and there are other versions or other OEM names. And you know the title and you know the goal of it because it's so ridiculous that we even have something like this. And while these things are like 400 euros new, I had to try it out. It has a full touch screen, which is the most interesting part for me, of course. So we have a touch screen, we have an LCD, we have Wi-Fi inside. And if we go to the settings and to like um, the extra Wi-Fi settings, we can see the MAC address. And this is actually hinting that the first three bytes are from uh, Espressive. So there's most likely an ESP inside. And yeah, let's take a closer look into everything, what's inside and what makes it tick and try to run Doom on it. So let's power it off. And as mentioned, here's really just like this pot inside, no knives, no cutter or anything. You have really just like this thing, which is now a bit hot from leaving it on for a few minutes. And yeah, we can see we just have one screw in the bottom. And if we unscrew it, we can take a look into it. Like so. And what we can see here is uh, really just a temperature sensor, a heating element with a safety switch. So in case something or the relay, the relay got stuck, it will still power off the heating element in terms of fire hazard. Otherwise, we have here three or four pins, which hint on being SWD. And if we take a look at the back of this PCB, we can find an STM microcontroller and a very simple circuit, like you have a power supply, you have the relay for the heating element, and a few GPIOs going to the temperature measurement and like a switch in the top and four wires going here to the front display, which makes it seem quite easy or nice to have it as a separate module. And if we take a look inside here, we can also see that there are two screws. And if we unscrew them, We can like simply remove this front module with the display and this four wire cable and now have to unscrew five more screws. We can take a look inside. I will simply unplug the cable for now so we have a simpler way of handling it like so. And what we can see here is for once the Wi-Fi module and as expected is, is the it is the Espressive. It's an ESP32 S3 or no not S3 even just like an ESP32. Um, I did dump the flash before and it's uh, encrypted but it's the first revision of this ship so we can even glitch it and could read it out. The logging inside of it hints on it being connected via AWS cloud, so MQTT via a private key, which we would need to extract if we want to do something with it. Then next to it, or the main PCB, is like the, the display driver and main processor. And this is a Renesas R7S72103-1VZ. This is quite a nice chip. 
It is quite powerful and it has a lot of GPIOs. It's an ARM core. Next to it we have 128 megabyte of flash. And if we remove the Wi-Fi module completely, it can be just lifted away. We can see under it another PCB, which has a microchip PIC microcontroller. And this is used for this touch interface here in the front. And it lights up and can say like start or stop. And next to it is another button, which is like return. But yeah, it's like also used to wake up the main processor from sleep in case it's just left on. And yeah, it has quite a low power draw then. If we take a look on the other side of the PCB, we can see another chip. This is like RAM and it's also, I think 128 megabyte. Other than that, we have a switching um, part for the backlight. The LCD is connected with this cable and there's the full touchscreen controller, a capacitive touchscreen controller. Other than that, we have like a beeper and a not populated SD card slot, an external EEPROM, and that's basically it. So let's connect this up to a flasher and see what we can make out of it. After hooking up an SWD flasher to the correct pins, which was possible to reverse engineer via the pinout, we got a successful dump out of the flash and they yeah, did add some nicely labeled logging to it. And this is the bootloader in this case and it was possible to reverse engineer basically how the LCD is initialized and so on. So it was possible to rebuild this and flash a new firmware onto the Renesas chip. And as you can see, it's now just basically swiping through every color and it's so blazingly fast that you can't even really see one full image by now creating this new firmware and Having to reverse engineer basically the LCD interface way too long, these 45 uh, pin cable inside of it. But you can see we have already a running firmware. And yeah, so after writing enough wrapper around Doom and porting it to the firmware, we can fully make it run on the cooking pot. So after turning it on, we can see that we have the fully working display with Doom in the middle and like the touchscreen map to different regions for buttons. And basically you have like select and start and after a while it will begin to run the demos that are included in Doom. And to exit it we can just go at start and in the middle to press enter. And we can basically now run Doom in a quite nice frame rate. So I really like this chip. And yeah, let's now get back everything into the main case and play a longer round of it. Well, there we go. We now have officially running Doom on this cooking pot. And yeah, I know how stupid this is, but it had to be done if something like this even exists. And yeah, as mentioned, you can now start a new game. Let's catch um, some enemies. And only if we get every level done, we are able to cook again. Let's uh, yeah, just basically make it that way. Uh, overall, I'm really liking this Renaissance SoC and it's the first time working with like such a powerful chip and even while it's, uh, while it's a bit intriguing, it still worked out quite well. So also to, uh, um, to get the development environment going, it was not too hard, but a bit of figuring everything out. Like, it's not Arduino-like, you really have to go deep inside of how to do stuff, how the chip works and still how get how to get the SDK working fully. 
but in the end we can see we have a nice overlay a nice smooth game and now we can finally cook some dinner